the most adrenaline packed form of bass fishing. Blam. That'll work, but it's not ideal. That could cause a lot of problems. I found that the best way to rig paddle tail swim baits to fish top water and heavy cover is with the screw lock keeper. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. That tail just gurgling, popping. It sounds just like a whopper plopper. They're like a, a weedless, soft plastic whopper plopper. That's exactly what it is. Here we go. Yeah. Top water. Is there anything more exciting than top water? It has got to be the most adrenaline packed form of bass fishing. Working that bait, watching in anticipation for what you know is about to happen. Blam! That explosion on your bait can send your heart into overdrive. Topwater is pretty amazing, but unfortunately, it's very limited. There's only certain areas and even certain times that you can really, truly effectively work topwater. If you're on a weedy, grassy, thick vegetation style of a lake, and you really want to throw a fish imitating topwater, you're pretty much out of luck. Or are you? Can you fish topwater in weeds? Weedless top water? Oh yes, indeed. And I'm gonna show you how, today on Captain's Corner. That's right folks, top water in the thick stuff. And I'm not talking about frogs or snakes or other creature baits. When the bass want bait fish, I'm gonna show you how to give them bait fish, no matter where or how deep in the thick stuff they are. A true fish imitator that makes all the top water commotion and triggers those heart stopping explosions that we all love. All that and completely weedless. And no, it's not a new specialty lure. It's not a frog or a hollow belly. It's not even a buzz bait. It's simply a method of fishing a bait most likely we already own, but most likely we fish entirely different. Today, we're going heavy cover top water with soft plastic paddle tail swim baits. Got one. There he is. Oh, yeah. Woo oh, stay on. He smashed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. We got to try to go get him. He's in this, buried in this good. When you get him buried in this grass like this, I think I can still feel him head shaking. Yeah, yeah, he's still there, I think. I think he's still there. He's nice. He's not huge. Come on. There he is. I see him down there. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's nice. He's actually really nice. Adam. <laughs> Look at that. Woo. Right in the corner of the lip. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. It works. It works. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Chunky little bass. Awesome. Woo! Gotcha one. Thank you, buddy. Excellent fight back here, too. Nice. That was a nice little explosion. Got, I had to fight for him to get him, but I got him. Pulling a, a nice sized bass out of all this heavy cover, that's a great bait. Now, by no means is this a brand new technique. In fact, here in Florida, this is probably the most common way to fish these swim baits. That's because we're loaded with vegetation. Shallow, grassy, weedy lakes everywhere. But as I often say, and I'm regularly reminded, all over this country, we all fish a little bit differently. And paddle tail swim baits are an extremely diverse bait that can be fished very effectively many different ways. However, this method of fishing swim baits is dynamite and can be fished everywhere, not just here in Florida. If your lake has any vegetation or cover, if your lake has bass that like to eat bait fish, and if you want an effective weedless topwater bait to target those bass, you need to try this. There, oh, he's little. That's that same fish. Guess he doesn't look very big. Not at all. But he's hungry. Come on, you can eat it. You're hungry. Remember it was all dying? That one, that one. That one's a better one. No, I think it's the same one. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's why he's got a big old belly on him. He's a hungry little bugger. Gone for that paddle tail again. He's got a small mouth for a bass, for a large mouth. 
Small mouth, big belly. There it is. That's a, uh, what's a big easy six inches, I think? Uh, six inch bait and a 10 inch bass. But he was hungry. <laughs> three times? Three times he hit? Yeah. Yeah. How you rig this bait is extremely important. The wrong hook, the wrong weights can make all the difference on how effective your presentation is gonna be. You could use a typical Texas rig setup with a small bullet sinker and a large EWG hook. That'll work, but it's not ideal. With that weight placed at the nose of that bait, it's always gonna wanna pull the nose of that bait down. That could cause a lot of problems. When your bait dips down nose first, it often wants to dig underneath that vegetation and cover, and it's gonna catch up on all of it. And rigging it without any weight, a lot of these swim baits just simply glide across the surface and roll. I found that the best way to rig paddle tail swim baits to fish top water and heavy cover is with a belly weighted swim bait hook with a screw lock keeper. The screw lock keepers keep a good hold of that bait, and because it's separate from the actual hook itself, the bait never balls up or slides down the hook as you're dragging it through that cover. The upward angle of the hook itself actually helps that bait glide over top of that cover. And the weight placement is the key factor. Being placed halfway down the hook, it actually acts like a keel, keeping that bait straight up and down and keeping it from rolling. It also weighs the entire bait down. Forcing that bait to sit deeper in the water and allowing that tail to really grab hold and do that thump, pop, and gurgle that you really want it to do. The size and weight of hook you choose really depends on the bait you choose to use. You need to have a hook that's big enough to penetrate through the entire bait and still have plenty of hook for a solid hook set. Too small of a hook and you won't have enough for a good solid hook set. Remember, you're trying to work these baits on the surface. Too much weight, it's gonna drag it down and keep it off of the surface. But not enough weight is gonna allow that bait to glide across the surface, not dig into it the way it needs to, to act properly. Most times, I'm gonna stick with the lightest weight I can get away with. 1 8th to 3 16th of an ounce is usually plenty for what I do. Generally speaking, a five to six inch swim bait is gonna take a five aught, six aught, or even seven aught hook to work properly. Your smaller three to four inch baits are generally gonna take a three or four aught hook. And most manufacturers already weight the hooks accordingly. Here we go. We got him. We got one. Oh, yeah. He, oh, he's nice. He's nice. He's not bad. He's not bad. Oh, yeah. Good fish. Good fish. He's not you. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. On the two piece rod. Get him up here. Yes. <laughs> Check it out, guys. There it is. Beauty. A thing of beauty. Yes. On that paddle tail swim bait, work top water, got him good. There it is. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. He's long, very long. Whew. Thanks, bud. Ha. Nice. I knew I should come to this spot. No two swim baits are created equal. Which baits you choose to throw, that's entirely up to you. Every manufacturer has a different shape, size and even a different plastic and because of that each swim bait is going to swim entirely different but here's what i learned that works best for me i like a bulkier bait something that's got a decent weight to it and a big flat paddle tail but i prefer my bait to have a softer plastic the softer baits have more overall action that big thumping tail also makes the entire body wiggle too firm of a plastic and it's really just the tail that's providing all the action. If the bait is too light, it more just glides across the surface, never really getting that tail to dig in and create that pop and gurgle that you really want. Which baits you choose to use, it's gonna take a little trial and error, but for the most part, the best way that I've learned to choose which baits are gonna work the best is to listen. If it's popping, gurgling, and creating a good wake across the surface of the water, that's a good bait, no matter how you break it down. Something right in front of that palm tree there. Yeah, about there. Got him, got him, got him. Yes, we got one, guys. Stay on. Yeah, he's still on there. Oh, man, they wrap you up so fast. 
Here he comes. Here we go. Oh, he's a good one. That's a good one, guys. Ooh, nice fish. Yeah, buddy. Let's get him up in here. Oh, he's a beauty. Real nice one, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Just got me a good one. Look at that bucket. Check it out, guys. Look at that. That swim bait, he inhaled it. I can almost get my whole fist in there. It's a good, good four pounder anyway. There it is. There's a giant. Oh, ho, ho, Nelly. Look how big and long she is. Ha! Ah, what a thing of beauty. Whoo! What a thing of beauty. Yes. These little soft plastic paddle tail swim baits have definitely stood up. They've proven them, them, their worth and they've caught us some beautiful fish. Yes! <laughs> this is a tremendous way to get reaction strikes at a bass. You're burning these baits pretty quickly across the surface. If you get it close to them, their natural reaction is going to be to strike, whether they're feeding or not. However, if you're getting a lot of blow ups, but very few of them are actually grabbing hold of that bait, there's a good chance that something's just slightly off on the bait that you chose to throw. It could be the size, it could be the color. If you're getting blow ups on a lighter color bait, but they're not really choking it down, try switching to a darker color. If you're still getting blow ups on the darker color and they're still not hitting it, try changing the size and go to a bigger bait. Don't be afraid of going big. They have a big mouth, they eat big meals. They're willing to eat a big bait. If the color change doesn't work, and the size change doesn't work, try going to a smaller bait and repeat that same process till you figure out exactly what they're wanting to eat today. I think so. First cast, as soon as I switch to that gambler, like I said, he's not bad either. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> there it is. Look at that, guys. I finally got a little redemption. Decent fish. I knew it, I had a feeling. Switch to a darker gambler. Nothing from fish is better on the surface like that. Whoosh. Now what gear you use for this method is very important. You're targeting big fish in thick cover. You wanna make sure you have the equipment that has the strength to be able to succeed at what you're trying to accomplish here. You want a good, strong rod. Something that's got a nice backbone, a medium heavy to even a heavy. You wanna make sure that rod has a nice sensitive, but quick tip. And I personally like it to have a good length, somewhere about the seven three to even seven foot six. This Cast King swim bait rod is my ideal setup. It's seven foot six, it's medium heavy, it's got a fast tip to it. It's got plenty of backbone to be able to fight the fish in the heavy cover but it's got extreme sensitivity to be able to feel everything. The reel here is very important. We're talking pure reaction fishing. I personally throw mine on faster reels, seven to one, eight to one, and even nine to one, making sure that I've got plenty of speed to be able to move that bait across the surface, but at the same time, plenty of speed to be able to haul that bass out before it completely wraps it up in all that heavy cover. And naturally, I'm going straight braid. I usually use 40 to 50 pound test on a setup like this. It gives me the strength and sensitivity I need to be able to work that bait and pull the fish out with confidence. Oh my God, do you see that? Yeah. I got him too. Really? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I think I still do. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, dude, is he decent? Yeah. yeah, he is. Oh, man, he's really nice. Actually, he's really nice. He hit that as soon as it landed in his mouth. Pretty much. Dude, there's a good one. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. Whoosh. Skinny. Skinny. Big old head. That's, I mean, he's got a head of a four pounder. I gotta catch, catch a small one with the tiny mouth and the big belly. The Here's a big one with a giant mouth and a tiny belly. <laughs> one of the better, one of the better fish we've seen today, though. Still the biggest, even though he's so skinny. But he's probably only about two, two and a quarter pounds. Should be four. Right on, right on, right on. Whoosh. 
but that's just it guys. When you know the top water bite is on and those bass are feeding heavily on bait fish and other fish, but you have a whole bunch of grasses, weeds, and other cover in between you and that fish, don't give up on top water. Grab yourself a paddle tail swim bait, put it on a belly weighted swim bait hook and burn it across all that cover. A true weedless fish imitating top water bait. And hold on guys, cause those explosions are going to be dynamite. That's it. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button and leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see me film. I'll do my very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming right here on Casking.